Hello there, you once more welcome to the Glory Ram Devotion Moment. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God has something beautiful for you today. Yesterday we were discussing from the Gospel book of John chapter number 8 and you know it was a discussion that had to do with Jesus declaring who he is and the Jews, you know, religious Jews have a problem with that. You see, people who have problem with the things of God when they are just merely religious. Paul writing he said they have a form of godliness. That's what Jesus talked about. Jesus talked about the middle of the word of God of non effect by their tradition. Paul talked about the fact that they had a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Yesterday we were looking at the fact that Jesus made it clear that if you allow the word of God to settle in you, allow the word of God to transform you, that you live your life according to the word of God, then you are his. But if not, you are a slave of sin. And he went on to talk about that today in John chapter number 8. And now let's look at verse number 38 and look at what he says. He says, I tell you, the things which I have seen and learned at the Father's side, and your actions also reflect what you have heard and learned from your Father. Think about that. Jesus said, I am manifesting what I've seen and heard from my Father. He said, you, your actions, reveal, reflect what you have learned from your own father. And they were wondering, and I, you know, he's talking about a particular source. Now, take note, who is your father? Let me ask you that. Who is your father? Jesus was talking to God Almighty. I mean, talking about God Almighty as his father. But you, who is your father? He said, those who, who practice, those who live in sin, those who do that, he said, they have a different father. And verse 39, he says, they, re they retorted, Abraham is our father. Jesus said, if you were truly Abraham's children, then you would do the works of Abraham. Follow his example and do as Abraham did. You know, Abraham is a man of faith. He obeyed the word of God. He lived his life according to the instructions of God. And Jesus is trying to say, you are not doing the same. You're doing something different. And then he went on in verse number 40. But now instead, you are wanting and seeking to kill me. A man who has told you the truth which I have heard from God. This is not the way Abraham acted. When you see some people who are in church, who are in church but... They pull up some stones, some amazing intrigues, stronger than what Nollywood and Hollywood and Bollywood can put together. You will be amazed. Are these ones from God? Do they have the Spirit of God? Is this the manifestation of the Spirit of God? Some people talk and you can sense the source of what they are talking about. Obviously not from God. That's what Jesus was talking to the Jews about here in verse 41. Uh, of chapter number eight the gospel book of john what god says you are doing jesus speaking to them now he said you are doing the works of your own father they said to him we are not illegitimate children and born out of fornication we have one father even god can you imagine they're saying god is their father there now now jesus said to them if god were your father you would love me and respect me and welcome me gladly. And this is what I found that people who are truly uh, born again, who have the spirit of God, find it easy to love other persons who are truly born again and have the spirit of God. When somebody claims to have the spirit of God but is jittery, feel, feel a kind of threatened when there is somebody else who loves God, then one of them must be having a, a different spirit. But it's amazing today what we see in the church of God, a lot of hatred, a lot of infighting, a lot of character assassination, backstabbing, jealousy, envy, all kind of strife that doesn't resemble or reflect the personality of the, of the heavenly father that we claim to be our father. And so Jesus making it clear that if you were of God, you would love me. 
and respect me and welcome me gladly for I proceeded came forth from God out of his very presence I did not even come on my own authority take note of that or of my own accord as self-appointed but he sent me take note of that Jesus said he sent me the father sent me hallelujah I sent God out something beautiful something awesome from it for each one of us God Almighty Jesus said God Almighty sent me and the next verse says why do you misunderstand what I say it is because you are unable to hear what I am saying you cannot bear to listen to my message your ears are shut to my teaching Jesus said you cannot bear to listen your ears are shut to my teaching why verse number 44 you are of your father and he hit the nail on the head you are of your father the devil and it is your will to practice the lust and the gratitude to gratify and the, it's your will to practice the lust and gratify the desires which are characteristics of your father he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks a falsehood he speaks what is natural to him for he is a liar himself and the father of liars and if all that and and of all that is false is a liar himself and father of liars and all that go in the same manner ask yourself are you of God are you ready of God do you enjoy lying do you lie without even? I mean, you just lie. It's a natural thing. You, they don't feel it in your heart. Lying just jumps out. You have a different father. And Jesus is telling you if you are God, you won't do that. If you are God, you won't attack people unnecessarily. If you are God, you're not going to condemn. You're not going to kill people on, with your mouth. Verse number 45 says, But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me do not trust me do not rely on me or adhere to me when somebody speak the truth as the person become your enemy he said who of you convince me of wrongdoing now Jesus speaking boldly say who of you convicts me do you have any evidence against my life who of you convince me of wrongdoing or finds me guilty of sin then if I speak truth why do you not believe me trust me rely on and adhere to me this was a bold one that Jesus said who of you can accuse me of wrongdoing of sin can you do that can I say that can you say that many who claim to be so holy so up there spiritually many of them cannot claim cannot boldly say look into my life because people don't have to look too far. May God have mercy on us. Jesus said, later on said, he said, the, the, the prince of this world cometh, but he has nothing in me. Should a light, such light be beamed on us? Should people begin to dig into our records? Would we be able to say we are without sin? Thank God for Jesus who came to die on the cross so that he can wash away all our sins. The Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter number 1 verse 8 and 9, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you need to do is confess, honor, up, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against God, I've sinned against man, I've sinned against myself. Have mercy on me. God forgive me my sin watch away my sin that is how you become born again that is how the presence of God come into you and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life I encourage you give your life to Jesus today that the glory of God may settle in your life I decree it is well with you you're well with your body well with your soul well with your spirit till I see you tomorrow I'm Ego Louis Yegbebu God bless you Thank mm -hmm. you.